third chapter, beginning with verse one. First uh, Corinthians. Could you read verse one and two for me? Okay, this is Second Corinthians. Yeah. Second Corinthians, the third chapter, one and two, to three, one and two for me. Do we begin again to command ourselves, or do we wish, as some others, of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Two. We are our principles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Now, when you look at these two verses, and probably I'm familiar with you, you never heard Paul uh, teaching this in this capacity. Paul here is defending himself. You hear me out, Jeff and Tim. Paul has had to come before the council of false apostles. The apostles had gathered around Paul and the other disciples, the apostles, uh, asking them or taunting them who had given them authority, who had given them the, 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 the uh, say so, a teaching in Corinth. If you notice, Paul taught in Corinth the first time that he left. He went to Macedonia. And then he wanted to come back, but he had to stay another, uh, he spent the whole winter somewhere else. And the Corinthians were, were, was, was kind of kicked out from Paul because he didn't come when he said he was going to come. So while Paul was away, the, 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 the false teachers came in and crept in. They were already there, but they expounded themselves. They, they got even boastful. They even got even louder. They got, they, they were trying to convert. The people that already been converted to Christianity and trying to filter, try to infiltrate them, try to uh, change the teaching of Paul. But now Paul has come back on the scene. And uh, just said, uh, what Paul has rectified all the wrong that the false teachers had put before them. So as Paul had, 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 had got cornered by these false apostles, they begin to question him about his ability of preaching when they knew where Paul came from. Many of us end up bowing our heads down and, and, and shame when people talk about our past. The devil knows your past, but he does not know your future. But here in his very first three verses, these, these false teachers had, had cornered Paul. And Paul not only had been on the offense all his life, Paul has turned to the defensive side of who he was. John talked about the suffering of Paul. John talked about how Paul was persecuted. And now, now Paul is coming back on the deep. And Paul is fighting back on the defensive call there that Paul teaches. Paul, let me ask you a question. So the God read it. Can we begin again to commend ourselves? Do we, do we cut ourselves on the back? Do we say we're this and we're that? Do we commend ourselves? Do we, do we lift up our voices falsely just to be recognized? I, I think I talked to one of the brothers today talking about uh, some preachers are boastful, some preachers are, are, are loud and out lavish and want to be seen. And want to be heard. My wife always talked about talking about some of the best preachers are those that are silent in the public. And I, and I, I said it wrong. But they, they, they're loud in the church, but they're quiet in public. You, you understand that, yeah? Mm -hmm. they, they're loud in the church now. And they, they flashy, they do all this in the church. But when they get out in the public, they quiet in the church house. Uh, my wife called them, called them uh, hypocrites. Now, now well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you, she, she, I think she, 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 she got a deal with her, but she only talks with, with me about this stuff. She, she tells me, she, she talks to me, and I find myself understanding what she said on that side while I'm over here. But these, these false teachers, Tim, they've already infiltrated the church. Yeah, I really had that scandalized it, but they all come back on the deep and try to try to rectify some of the stuff. And don't you know, you don't have to fight your battle. God will do that. Paul, Paul, Paul tells us in, 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 in the church, I don't need really no written certificate to show you who I am. Does that make sense? Does that make sense seeing me, uh, uh, Sister Carl, Sister Kathy? And then see me, I have to give you a, a letter of order in order to preach in 
that church. Now, now, Paul says, you don't need no certificate, man. No, no, you don't need no, uh, uh, what you call that thing that you put on your wall with, uh, you don't need no ordination sheet. Help me, Jeff. You don't, you don't need no degree to, to tell people, show people, uh, how do you say this? Uh, what's it about? Wait, wait. Huh? What is it? What you about? What you do? No, you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need, you don't need no, no piece of paper to tell them who you are. Your life, this is, this is the description of, your life is your testament or testimony. The way that you live is the way that God is pro, 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 projecting. You know what I'm projecting? If God is showing, can I tell my wife all the stuff that she's doing? I said, now God is showing your gifts to other people. He opened doors for you while you were being humble in the background. Now he's putting you down front. And I, I tell because she be all honored at, at, at woman of the year, bit honored this is woman of the year. While she's back crying in the dark, praying to God in, in secret. You know what you do in secret? He ain't blessing out in open. Here Paul is telling all the things that I have done, all the things I've done, I don't need no piece of paper. That's the second verse as you read, Sister Cotton. Why do I need a certificate? Why, why do I need documentation of who I am? I have my documentation. God has written it on my heart. You need to recognize God's people. Not by a piece of paper, you know. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, he's he, he, he been a human resource. He's done all this stuff. And, and, and people ask you for, uh, uh, how you do this? A job. And job I, I, I ain't had a job in you in almost 20 years. But they, uh, you, you, you send in a, you do a job application. And then you turn around and have to give them a resume. Correct me, Jim. Correct me, Jim. You give them a resume of your past. You give them a resume of, of, of what you've done. Do you give them a resume of what, what you're doing now? As a Christian minister, a, a pastor, a apostle, a, you don't need no written piece of paper. Your life ought to speak to you. But he tells us, I don't, I don't need to show you no certificate. Paul is really on the detail because it, it's on my heart. Now you need to recognize if you want to read, read something, read the men that have been saved. Read the women that have been, been baptized and, and converted. Read them. If you want to read, read something, I've never had one or two. Anybody, anybody, can you got anything on one or two? Do you think I've one or two? Well, you know, I did a um a sermon on this, especially verse two. Okay. And uh -huh. you yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. That that right there tells you about your actions for people to see. And, and, and as you were saying. You know, you don't need education to be Christ-like. You need faith. You don't need degrees to be Christ-like. You need faith. You need to believe. And you need to be obedient. And as he says there, and, and I, I went past one, but as he's saying that to you, he's telling you, you are a statement out to the world. You are self, yourselves are our letter and it's not written on any degree it's not written on the garb you wear it's not written on the accolades or anything like this it's in your heart it's about your heart and it's written in your heart because that's where God truly places the spirit if you want to know us you'll know what our heart produces it tells you in John we, we can do murder and all that stuff but man if the Lord fills it up you can do some great things so you don't have to walk around with ten commandments or the bible in your hand or screaming out that I'm, I'm a Christian or a disciple because your heart will show the world that and it says 
known and read by everyone. So understand that you are being looked upon. People are seeing your actions, not your words, because I know a whole lot of people with great words that can't do a hill of beans for anybody else. And, you know, we know the story of the Good Samaritans. And we knew two men that had all the accolades. They were dressed that way, but they didn't do the deed. The Samaritan's letter was written on his heart, and he was known and read by the one he helped and by the innkeeper, who he said, I'll take care of even his future needs. So understand when we when we claim to be disciples, when we go to the Lord, we become him. We become how people see him in the world. And if they don't see him, then they know you can't claim him. And then when you go to three, you'll see it says, you show that you are a letter from Christ. The result of our ministry. Not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. It's written in you. And it's by the spirit that all this works in you. And you got to have faith to even receive these things. So you, you are a representation of of Jesus Christ. You are who Jesus has in the world to speak to the world for him. And are you speaking for him? Are your actions doing more than just saying? But are you actually showing some compassion? Because Jesus talked about compassion, but he showed it all the time. He talked about love, but he showed it all the time. He talked about sacrifice, and he gave it all the time. He talked about being obedient, and he was that all the time. His letter was in his actions. I think you, you, well, you might have lost some of them. I'm still here. <laughs> oh, okay, there they go. And as Jeff Kennedy said, in those two verses, hey, you don't have to walk around with no, no big signs here. I've been born again, or I'm this, I'm that. If it shows up in your lifestyle, and you have a walking testament, you want to show, show the world who you are just by your living. Look at verse 3 and 4, and let me get out of here. Let me get out of here on verse 3. Because this is, this is, this is good. Uh, verse 3. Uh, go ahead and read verse 3, Sister Kathy. Why, as, much, as you are manifestly declared to be completely acceptable to Christ, minister by us, written not with ink, <laughs> But with the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. Not just tablets of stone, but in flesh with tablets of the heart. And touch, 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 his point was that he did not need second-hand information. He, he, he said, all you have to do is look around and see how many people have come to Christ under his ministry. Now, you look at, you look at, you look at some of the Paul said, I ain't got to tell you nothing. I don't even have to open my mouth. Uh, Jeff, Jeff was saying, your, your, your evidence is what you see. Now, we know faith is a certain thing, hopefully, and the evidence of things not seen. But when you look at, uh, I don't, if I, even if I say the growth of people in your church, I can say, okay. But when you, but when you look at the spiritual growth of a something, then you ought to give God the praise because if it hadn't been for him, you couldn't have you couldn't have done it. If it hadn't 
good for him, giving you the wisdom to teach, you couldn't have done it. But Paul is saying that he didn't need secondhand testimony. He had firsthand proof that God is working in him. See, that's one thing. Everybody's always looking in, looking out of a window instead of looking in a mirror. When you see, when you, as they, they talk, when you know the truth, you should not be blinded. When you know the truth, you shed, you can't be bamboozled, hoodwinked, or deceived because you know the truth. Because God has wrote it in your heart. And then Paul tells us, you must understand the regeneration of a Christian is coming from that old man Adam and to the new man Christ is being regenerated. That old stuff is there that you re regenerate a new life because it is of Christ. So we must understand, we, we are living testaments for what God has done. Now, the whole thing about it, how does the world know that we've been walking with God? How does the world know that we have been in fellowship with Christ? Well, it tells you because it manifests itself in you. It manifests in the way that you talk. It manifests itself in the way that you walk. It manifests itself in the way that you live. And I told y'all before, a lot of some, some of you are going to be the only Bible that somebody going to read. You know what I mean? The way, that you, the way that you present yourself, the way that you speak, the way that you talk to me, it's going to be the only Bible that some people read. I'm out of here on that. Because when you live right, it shows. You all say, uh, you all often say, uh, let your light so shine that me and they see your good work and glorify your father to them. How do you let your light shine? You don't make it shine. You let it shine. And that light is the light of Jesus in your heart. I'm out here. Come on in, young preacher. <laughs> uh, let's go on to verses four and five. Anybody want to read four and five? So, so when we start off here, Paul, Paul is talking about himself here, and and he's saying he's a letter because remember Paul has been writing on them and for them, but he says here such confidence we have through Christ before God, and and Paul clears up a few things here. He says, I don't want you to think that I'm bragging on me. I'm not. I'm not acting haughty and above you because I'm telling you these things. But Paul is saying that you are who I wrote on. And I'm God's instrument that he used to write on you. But I don't want you to think it comes through me because he says it comes through Christ before God. It, it, it ain't Paul who does it. Paul is an instrument and is... As, they, as he speaks to them in this pen that he is and the ink that he is and he's writing on them, he's saying this is God's work. I am just a vessel. And, and, he, and he's going to make it even clearer to him because once he tells him, hey, it's not me. I'm not bragging on me. I'm not boisterous. There's no pride here because all of this is through Christ before God. As soon as he tells you who it's through, there can be no pride or arrogance. Because it tells you he knows it's not him. But he's telling you, I am willing to be used. And as Pastor Stevens was saying a minute ago, you know, we great in the church, in that building. But we a church mouse outside of that building. And Paul is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm used all the time. I'm, I'm confident in who I serve and I am being used by him, so now I'm with you, and, and I've written on you, and you are tablets that I'm writing on, but it's in your heart that I'm putting 
the message. And then he says, but not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Now this is a big verse. Because Paul saying, I ain't a lot. I ain't, I ain't a lot by myself. None of us are. All of us should even be wondering, why does God call on us? Why does God let us be what most of us would not want to be? And, and Paul doesn't say, I, I've been made up and I'm ready for the task and I'm sufficient for the task. Because none of us are. He said the only one. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Change it up. says this to you right here. I I can't say I'm nervous when I'm preaching or teaching because it it is never about me. So I, I, I don't let it be about me. It's not about what I think I know is what, what the Lord gives you. And you just said he equips you. If the Lord is equipping you, I ain't got nothing to be nervous about. He, he'll put them words there. Remember when you had Peter and John in front of the Sanhedrin and they thought they, these country bumpkins wasn't going to know anything. And the spirit moved them and boy did they light them up. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, he, if he's equipping me, he says, not that we are competent in ourselves. See, I would be nervous if I was going up there by myself. If it was just Jeffrey Lyons' education or, or my abilities. Because I, I got some abilities. I can speak in front of people. I can tell you some things. But God's word and the message that comes from God, I can't tell you anything unless he gives it to me. So I can't claim anything here because none of this is mine. The word is not mine. The obedience is not mine. The choosing, the grace, the mercy, all of them gifts come from God. And when he gives them to you or when he equips you uh -huh. I can't claim that because guess what somebody gave that to me and, and he says that he says I'm not competent in myself to claim any of this there's no bragging here there's no no kind of arrogance with me no pride but our competence uh oh but, but what I am competent in what I am confident in comes from God See, see, I can be confident in God's word because God gives me the word and I know his word to be true. So if I'm just speaking his word, I'm not worried about if you say, well, I, I want to be a member or I, I believe in the Lord because the Lord never told me to change anybody. He just told me to go out there and put the word out and he said, the word will convict. The word will penetrate. He, he never said Jeff Lyons could do anything like that. All he said was go and speak it. And, and see, if I can speak it, I can let it do what it's supposed to do. And, and, and Paul's telling him in this letter, he's living it. He's the ink that's writing on him. And don't think I'm bragging about me because all of this stuff comes from God. I can't claim anything. I was never special. We all know Paul was on the road to Damascus and had to get changed himself. What was special about Paul? He had to accept the Lord, but God was doing all the work. 
Paul was a willing vessel, and that's what he's telling them. I'm a willing vessel for him. So I'm confident because of God. Paul wasn't being led around by Paul. He was being led around by the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and none of us are even partially, even tittily equipped to change lives. None of us. The one that does it is Jesus. That's his job. Say it, it's Jesus, it's his job. And, and, and if you go and be a disciple of Christ, you can't be shy, because how they gonna hear the word? You can't be shy because how you gonna do the deeds? You gotta be confident in what he can do with you. And, and if, if Paul isn't sufficient, Paul says to him truthfully, in my weakness, guess who got the power? I, I, I can't tell you that I got some power. The Lord has the power. And, and when he uses me, he might direct the words, he might direct the healing, he might direct the prayer, but it is never because of me, it is coming through me from him and that means that our confidence our sufficiency our reliance and dependency belongs to God we ain't strong without the Lord we, 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 we can't stand without the Lord we, we can't get rid of sin without the Lord so this grace that the Lord gives us lets us show his strength and the Lord will keep you strengthened and full if you want to be strengthened and full and Paul is telling me it can't be about me it never was about me and then he says in 6 he has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. Well, let's stop there. Because he said he made us competent of a new covenant. Not an old covenant. See, th this new covenant has a deal breaker. Because the old covenant had one way to be with the Lord. The new covenant has a new way to be with the Lord. I, I don't have to go through anybody in the old covenant. I got to go through everybody in the old covenant. I don't have to go through anybody in the new covenant. I knew about the condemnation, but I didn't know about the grace and mercy. So this, this new covenant gives me a different relationship with the Lord. And Jesus is the mediator. He is the center and focal piece of me being able to have this covenant and to do the Lord's work. You don't know any good work unless you have Jesus. I don't care if you're the nicest person to everybody on the planet. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're doing it for naught. I don't care if you give out candy to the kids, feed the homeless, walk around, give clothes out. If you don't have Jesus, you do it for not. And then Paul tells him when he says this new covenant, he tells you and lets you know the new covenant is better than the old covenant. That's why we got a new covenant. We needed something better than what we had. See, that, that sacrifice in the Old Testament couldn't cover me. But that sacrifice in the New Testament covered me and everybody else. And not just for that time, but for generations to come and for everybody. So, so this, this new covenant 
is huge. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. We get it because of a new covenant. And, and it's not of the letter. Uh-oh. You mean to tell me he, he threw some shade backwards because the letter was the old covenant. He said not of the letter. That was the old covenant, but of the spirit. See, this is a spiritual thing here. This is a faith-based thing here. This is where you got to step out and believe in what you don't see nor can you touch. Because remember, the letter was condemnation. The spirit is a new life. And he says it right next to it. He says, for the letter kills. But the spirit is life. It gives life. And and who doesn't want this life? See, the, the letter was that law. It, it was them, them tablets. That's why he talked. Paul is playing with words here to make us see things. He's, he's drawing a picture because when he says the letter, that law, it was written on stones, but the new covenant is written on your heart. And if you go back up in your verses... Paul says, you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts. Paul is telling you right now, the testimony is about a new covenant and it ain't written on no stones. You don't need tablets to walk around to find out and know that you are a child of God and that you can do the actions of Christ because of your heart. Not because of what you can see, but because of the spirit that is in you that guides you. And if that spirit is guiding you, then everybody should see that spirit guiding you. See, Paul, he's drawing this picture and he, he plays it real nicely because he, he slips back into the old covenant. He moves back up into verse 2 to back himself up. And he, he says, now that you know this new covenant, not the old one, now you know why I'm saying it's on your heart and not on tablets. Now you know why the old one killed you, the new one gives you life. You don't get stuck on the old because the old is going to kill you. And the spirit, the spirit is what is written in your heart. So the new law is a spiritual one that is in your heart. The new covenant is a spiritual one. Written in your heart. In other words, the Holy Spirit is part of the new covenant. And that written law, the Holy Spirit says, step out the way because I got to go to where I'm supposed to be. Okay. And, and now you don't need that written law. Because I'm here. The Holy Spirit is here. And I'm the law in your heart. See, we, we can do God's work. We can do God's law. We can abide by God. We can be obedient and faithful because of the Spirit. And I'm not saying don't read your Bible because the Spirit got you. Of course read your Bible. But we have a spirit and that spirit will actually direct you to reading your Bible and making you a better letter that's alive in this world, doing things in this world. And guess what? If you, if you know the letter, then you can do what the letter says to do. And we don't deal with all this nonsense of the world. And, and if, if, if I can just be straight up and honest, because I'm probably going to do a sermon on this. If you pay attention down here, there's this pastor, whatever you want to call the dude. I, I almost call him something else. Lord, forgive me. His name's Jamal Bryant. 
He just told the people the, the other night, other week, this past weekend about when Jesus was here, he was doing 85% wrong. How is the created going to tell the creator you doing wrong? How is the one that God was so pleased with and had no sin get judged by a man down here to say that he was doing wrong? Because if he had true confidence through Christ, why would he speak against Christ? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. And, and, and if you look at the size of his congregation and the people that are there, they're getting bad ink on their hearts. Because you got this man lying to him to, to be popular and to make money and to look like he's more than what he should be. But Paul tells you it ain't about you. And, and this man is telling him it's about him. So, so he's writing a bad letter. And the bad thing is, those that sit up under him and, and take in this garbage, and I'm going to call it straight up garbage, they need to get somewhere where somebody can truly write God's letter on them. See, sometimes we, we get caught up in the wordsmiths and the elects and the, the gifts of what they wear and what they own. God ain't about none of that stuff. It's about your relationship with the Lord. And this is a serious relationship. And when you have somebody speaking those things to you, you can't get in line with a new covenant. Because you got a spirit that's not working with the Lord. So it ain't a, a spirit of a Holy Spirit. It's one that's trying to destroy you. And, and it's weird that we get on this topic about writing on hearts. Our job and our responsibility at all times, I don't care about my sins and my background and all my faults, but when I'm speaking the word of God, it is to speak the truth because God does not lie, and if I'm going to share his word, why am I lying on it? Throw it in there. <laughs> so, so I, I just want you to know, we have to be a true representation, and he tells you that, and, 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 and this is right in line with it. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry. Paul's ministry was about the gospel of Jesus. When did Jesus have a fault? When did Jesus sin? When did he not do God's work? If you can tell me when that happened, then you can tell me why he didn't go to the cross. And the world sees it. So he says, the result of our ministry comes from Christ. And it is not in ink. It's with the spirit. And the world sees it. And it's the spirit of a living God. Not on tablets or stone but on human hearts that the world has to see the true word of God. And when you see blasphemy, hypocrisy, ludicrousness, and just straight up ignorance, speaking on God's word, you know we have to get out there and start writing even more on people's hearts. You got to stop being afraid to be that vessel that steps out into the world and says, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Well, well, what did you do when he heard your cry? Did you get up? Did you do something for him? Did he answer your prayer? Are you still here? Or are you still struggling? Because you, you don't feel God like he feels you. See, I, I know what I've been through with the Lord. I've been scared a whole bunch of times. I watched a child of mine. I didn't think was going to make it. I was crying about it. I was hurting about it. But I can tell you God is just that good. When you are broke down, he is still strong. 
And if I'm a liar or something, it ain't going to be on my God who keeps answering, protecting, providing, loving, showing mercy and grace, just doing everything for me that I can never do for myself. And it, 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 it fires me up to see these so-called elect pastors of these mega churches who don't know a member in the church except by a dollar sign that they drop in this offering plate. And the status of things that they give them lie on the Lord. Jesus was always about his father's work. It was written on his heart better than anybody else's. Jesus had the ability to take credit for it. And Jesus said, no. I'm about my father's business. No, I'm going to ask him first. No, I'm going to be obedient to him. Satan, no, you can't promise me nothing because you don't have nothing. And when you see those elect false apostles sitting there writing bad letters, that means we got to get up and start writing true letters. To go over those hearts. Y'all excuse me. <laughs> yeah, we we out here and we amening and praise God and all these crazy things, but the words that you say are against God, so why do you think you can give God some praise lying on God? You're not going to get away with it. That's right. You, you can fake if you want to down on this world, but there is another place. See, see there, there's another life that we still have to come. And, and, and when it shows up and you, you get up in front of the Lord and you say, Lord, I know you've been wrong when you sent Jesus 85% of the time. Uh -huh. Satan going to be sitting on his chair just cracking up. He going to say, I persuaded this fool with just some gold and a car and a little bit of money and a watch. And, and let him be popular in that world and, and he ate it. He's still eating it right now in front of the Lord. But he's going to confess this lie. Yeah. And then guess what? He's he going to follow suit with them goats. Because he got a place to go. So I, I'm, I'm telling you. Paul says that you. Yes, sir. Were letters at one time. Somebody wrote into you. And now you got to go out and be a vessel and write into somebody else. And Paul says, it wasn't me that did this. God gave this to me to give to you. There is no message I've ever written that was Jeff Lyon's message. There is no gospel I've ever read that has been mine. I couldn't tell you how to tie my sneakers until somebody told me how to tie them. See, the Lord can tell you how everything began because he spoke it in the being. The Lord will tell you how everything will end because he's going to show it to you one day. The Lord got a heaven and a hell. But the one thing that he has that nobody else will ever have, God is in total control. Ain't nobody else got that. Hmm. Amen, amen. That was. <laughs> yes, sir. I preach you. I knew when we hit that. When we hit that, I studied it last week. I knew when we hit that. You had a. You had something about preachers. You had something about apostles. <laughs> I knew you had something. And I said, much as we talk about these false teachers and everything, I knew. I just. I, what, I, what I tell you today? Yeah. I just knew. I just knew something was coming out today. And we are a walking, living Bible. I tell you that all the time. Yes. You have to live right, and you have to live right in front of people. Most of all, live right in front of God. He's the only one that can give you a stamp of approval. 
my good and faithful servant. He's been faithful on a few things. Come up and I'll make you more than a minute. You got to get that stamp of approval. They, they call it out here. I know the Republican got to got to put a stamp on it. <laughs> God already stamped. God already stamped it in your heart. Walk like you. Walk like you a Christian. Don't act like. Walk like you a Christian. Live like you a Christian. And give most of all, give like you a Christian. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. I enjoyed it, man. Amen. Amen. I don't want to let this cut off the line. Yeah, I like you want to be preaching tonight. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what you say, yeah? What you say, yeah? What you say, yeah? Yeah, I didn't even know. 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 I didn't like you say, people got one thing in the church, but when they get out of yeah. class, it changes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I to a church and everybody there was so friendly and just so nice to you and welcome you back. Some of the same people I see in the next week. Now, mm-hmm. always, when you see me, I'm going to be smiling and talking. Yeah. And I was just smiling and going towards these ladies. And she turned and looked the other way because. say something in the church, don't we? We say, God is good. All the time. Well, then why don't we act like it? Yes, sir. See, it's nice to say it, but it's better to show it. And, and we we got God's letter in our heart. We got the spirit in us. 
We should be out here fighting. If the devil fighting, why ain't we fighting? And if he got people at work, why ain't we at work? Um, uh, and I and it and it hurts my heart and it, it bothers me to my spiritual soul, to my bones to hear somebody lying on the Lord. I I know anybody in the pulpit. Everybody is a sinner. I ain't never claimed and don't tell anybody to be perfect, but you don't have to lie on the Lord. And if the people under him are or her are following in state, then understand we got people that don't know the Lord. That that's work for us. That that is working. If you Paul, he was upset when he came back that his people hadn't stayed strong and. We got people leading people astray, and we got to get stronger and get out there. Um, it, it's it's hard to watch us watch what the Lord said was going to happen. The elect will even be persuaded, and they are persuaded all the time for nothing. They trade them in for thirty pieces of silver, just like Peter did. I'm just saying it just and I said Peter but I mean uh, what's his name forgive me <laughs> Judas yeah just like Judas forgive me yeah 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 it just angers me to watch the world accept lies when the Lord has given you the ability to read the truth and call on him yourself. Stop being comfortable. We cannot get comfortable in this world. That's that's how you stay stuck to this world. It feels good. I, if the world was supposed to feel good to us, I think that's where the Lord would leave us to be at. But he says he has a place better than this prepare for us and we all should be striving to get there and we should be trying to get as many that don't know them to go there with us that's all I got tonight amen amen and I continue to pray for those that I continue to pray for those that are sick uh, Pastor uh, Tim's mom Sister Freeman uh, the Payne family and all those that we know and do not know, continue to pray for every one another. Yes. I pray y'all have a good night and pray that God will bless you to see a new day. And then and the coming of that new day and new grace, but guess what? He wanted praise. Amen. He wanted glory and he sure wanted honor. Amen. Y'all have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.